He's the clown prince of crime, the harlequin of hate, the jester of genocide. You know him, you fear him, it's the Joker. The Dark Knight Detective's arch, arch, arch enemy. Possibly one of the most famous villains and characters Western comics has ever produced, the Joker is an enduring and terrifying glimpse into true, unadulterated evil. Joker's depravity and moral rot have been his defining features since his introduction, and each time he appears to terrorize Gotham City, he seems intent on one-upping his last horrifying scheme. As a result, we have literal years worth of appalling content to sift through as we do our best to count down the 10 worst things the Joker has ever done. And a quick warning before we begin, some of the items on this list include depictions of murders, kidnappings, and torture, sometimes involving persons underage. You've been warned. Number 10. Carmine's Family Dentist Dear viewer, we have a difficult task ahead of us. Counting down the Joker's worst deeds is like counting down the top 10 times water was wet. Just know that however terrible the first few items on the list are, they pale in comparison to what we have in store at the bottom. So to kick off our little festival of fright, let's look at the War of Jokes and Riddles from Tom Taylor and Michael Janin. It's a bright summer day in Gotham and the Joker is holding open auditions for comedians. The clown has lost his laugh and he searches for the perfect comedian to bring a smile to his face. Of course, every comic that fails, Joker mercilessly slaughters and dumps into a pile at the foot of the stage. This is the Joker of the War of Jokes and Riddles. Merciless, callous, and lacking any semblance of restraint. This Joker is young, hungry, and desperate. He searches for anything that can make him chuckle once more, which makes him even more unpredictable than the Joker on a regular day. During this period, Joker reaches out to infamous Gotham crime boss, Carmine Falcone. He gives Falcone an ultimatum. Carmine, this is the Joker. I need you to kill the Riddler. You have one hour. Thank you. Carmine panics, knowing what the Joker is capable of. Falcone sends Hitman out to dispatch the Riddler, but they approach him during an inopportune time. The Riddler is meeting with Poison Ivy, trying to sway her to join his side in his war against the Joker. While walking, Falcone's men attack the Riddler, but Ivy easily overpowers them, killing them all. When Carmine Falcone returns to his office, he finds the Joker waiting for him. The Joker very calmly lays out a set of teeth across the crime boss's desk. The Joker says, It's been an hour. He's not dead. So, here are your mother's teeth. When Falcone acts confused, the crown prince of crime elaborates, I said these are her teeth. I took your mother's teeth from her mouth and I made a smile on your desk. The Joker then casually guns down the rest of Falcone's entourage. A personal assistant to Falcone, one Oswald Cobblepot, is the only one to see the whole truth amidst the madness. The future Penguin realizes in that moment that Falcone's mother lives three hours away from Gotham. Joker only gave Falcone one hour in which to kill the Riddler, which means the Joker removed Falcone's mother's teeth well before he even asked the crime boss to kill the Riddler at all. Like I said, this is a Joker who is merciless and unpredictable, which puts him at his most dangerous and most detestable. Number 9. Christmas in Gotham one chilly Gotham December, Joker decided the city had enjoyed a little too much peace and quiet. This time, Joker made a rare calculation. Taking up a number of sniper positions across Gotham City in the lead up to Christmas Day, Joker began picking off targets seemingly at random. At first, it was unclear to the police exactly who was responsible for the high-profile shooting. But after killing the mayor, the superintendent, shooting up a police crime scene, as well as destroying the bat signal, it becomes crystal clear via a clue left of the scene that the culprit is none other than the Joker himself. Next, the mass murderer sets up a live stream counting down to his next kill, including camera angles from all over the city of possible locations for the murder. This sends the cops on a frenzied search to find all of the sniper locations Joker has set up across Gotham, as well as sending the city into lockdown. These locations turn out to be a ruse, however, to keep the cops busy. The Joker's true plan becomes clear when he kidnaps a newscaster and livestreams her suspended and gagged body in an unknown warehouse along with another countdown. The Joker then calmly walks up to the GCPD and turns himself in. Utterly baffled, the police announced to a terrified city that they had the Joker in custody and set off to save his final victim. But Joker, as usual, is three steps ahead. By allowing himself to be taken in, knowing that news of his arrest would cause Gotham to reopen in a cacophony of Christmas shopping, he all but guarantees that the bomb will claim other victims as well. The GCPD, with the help of Batman, realizes that the bomb has likely been placed alongside a shopping center to ensure causing maximum carnage. The detectives rush to find and defuse the device as fast as possible. Ultimately, they are unsuccessful. Although Batman is able to save the kidnapped reporter, the bomb does detonate just as Joker planned. This story arc from the pages of Gotham Central is considered one of the most nuanced and best depictions of the Joker in modern comics. It shows a Joker always ahead of the game, 
a Joker that uses an unwitting police force to enact his atrocities as much as he uses bombs or bullets. While this enactment of the Joker doesn't have any grand plans for citywide control or annihilation, the obvious joy he takes from causing such widespread fear and despair puts into stark clarity exactly why this character is so horrific. But before we get into any more of the Joker's worst moments, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an upload, and smash that like button for some plot armor today. Okay, now on to our next entry. Number 8, The Gotham Reservoir our 8th place finish comes from Batman's first canonical showdown against the Joker. The Man Who Laughs by Ed Brubaker and Doug Mankey documents a still young Cape Crusader as the Joker unleashes his very first terrifying wave of violence over Gotham City. The story features one of Joker's most insidious, ingenious, and infamous evil schemes of all time that has earned its place as a staple in the history of the Batman and the Joker. Batman and Commissioner Gordon knew they were facing a new echelon of criminal when they came up against the Clown Prince of Crime for the very first time. Never before had Gotham City seen the horrific visit of a corpse killed with Joker toxin until a basement full of rotting victims are uncovered. And never had a killer so easily been able to stir up terror in the hearts of the citizens, causing mass panic and evacuation. The Joker commandeered local news stations and began predicting his next victims live on the air, hours before they happened, daring both the cops and the Batman to stop him. But these terroristic games were only Joker's opening act, a clever and compelling ruse to keep the police worried about the specifics of Joker's next target. In reality, the Joker's real target was Gotham itself. While Batman is helping Commissioner Gordon protect Joker's singled out victims, Joker fills the Gotham Reservoir with enough of his trademark toxin to infect the entire city. When Batman finally arrives, Joker has already completed his plan, holding the switch that would unleash death itself into Gotham's water supply. The Joker warns the approaching vigilante. I'd stay right there if I were you, Batsy. If I flip this lever, the floodgates will open into the viaduct, and then Gotham dies. When Batman detonates his own explosive, cutting off the reservoir from the city's water supply, a crazed and angry Joker lashes out at him and the two do battle, with Batman eventually prevailing in the first fight. Additionally, it is important to note that even on this, the first occasion of their meeting, Batman considers the benefit of simply pushing him into the vat of his own acid, killing the clown outright. The sheer fact that Batman considers breaking his own rule during their very first encounter speaks volumes to the danger Batman understood Joker posed even then. Number 7. Family Dinner Next, we'll look at one of the Joker's most earnest attempts to rip apart the Bat Family at the seams. For those keeping track at home, this tale comes to us from the pages of Death of the Family by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Don't be fooled by its 7th place finish. Death of the Family might be one of the scariest and best Joker stories told in recent years. For one thing, throughout the entire Death of the Family arc, Joker wears the skin of his face strapped across his own flayed scalp. The story actually begins with Joker breaking into the Gotham City Police Department and stealing the skin of his face from the evidence locker, making sure to murder a few police officers in cold blood while he's at it. But this time, Joker's plans aren't for Police Commissioner Jim Gordon, we'll get to those later, but the Bat Family itself. With all the Robins, Batgirls, and various other partners cropping up around Batman, Joker believes that his once formidable opponent has been hiding behind a shield of sidekicks. Freeing Batman from his attachments, Joker believes, will return the Bat to his former strength, saving Batman from himself, and reinforcing his need for the Joker. But Joker has failed time and time again to vanquish Batman. What makes him so confident this time will be different? Well, this Joker says, I know who you are. As skeptical as Batman is at this prospect, Joker certainly proves his point when he brutally abducts Alfred Pennyworth, leaving a tape recording of him torturing Alfred for Bruce to find when he arrives home. Over the next few days, Joker would individually capture and torture each other member of the Bat family he has targeted. And during every kidnapping, Joker seems to delight in torturing each and every hero. Joker kidnaps Batgirl's mom, cuts off her wedding ring finger, and actually proposes to Barbara Gordon with it before knocking her out. Joker digs up the dead bodies of Nightwing's childhood circus troupe and hangs them all around a big top to traumatize him. All the other members of Nightwing's old circus troupe Joker poisons and commands to brutally beat Nightwing to unconsciousness. When Damian Wayne, the current Robin, strikes off on his own to save Alfred, Joker lures him to the Gotham Zoo and sets hordes of rabid animals on the boy. Joker then forces Robin to fight a terrifying Jokerized version of the Batman to the death. Eventually, Damien passes out from a combination of exhaustion and Joker gas. Red Hood and Red Robin are captured together, locked in a cell together, 
and presented with both of their fathers as a threat. Joker then demands that the two fight each other to the death for his amusement. The brothers do battle, but only as a ruse to stall the Joker from killing their fathers. When Red Hood guns down Joker, it is revealed that the body was a fake, and gas fills the chamber, incapacitating both former Robins. Once Joker has the entire Bat family in his clutches, things get even darker still. Luring Batman himself to Arkham Asylum, Joker shows Brucey video of each of his sidekicks being beaten and threatens their lives if Batman himself does not submit. Batman sits dutifully on an electrified throne and Joker flips the switch, defeating the Dark Knight without throwing a single punch. Joker gathers the Bat siblings and their father to a dinner, hosted by a Joker toxined Alfred. To ensure they all stay for dinner, Joker douses the table and all of the sidekicks in gasoline, triggered to alight if Batman attempts to escape from the bindings that hold him in his seat. A poisoned Alfred brings in the first course, a platter containing the frozen skin of each of Batman's sidekicks' faces. Though these turn out to be fakes, Joker has not actually carved off all of the Bat family's faces. Phew. When Batman finally breaks from the chains to chase down the Joker himself, Joker gasses the room with his trademark toxin. The panicked and terrified sidekicks were supposed to kill one another for sport as Batman chased Joker through a labyrinth of caves, but Joker miscalculated. While drugged, Alfred displays immense willpower while watching his adopted children try to kill each other. Alfred is the first to regain control over himself and puts himself in between the poisoned children, each of whom slowly begin to come back to themselves as well. When Batman finally catches the Joker, the Clown Prince throws himself down a chasm rather than be taken in, seemingly, for now, perishing in the fall. Death of the Family presents Joker in a near-perfect context. He is unquestionably horrific during this story arc. He pushes the Bat Family to the brink and does some of the most heinous things imaginable to break them individually, but they prove once and for all their love and devotion to one another is something stronger than the Joker ever imagined. Rather than just base depravity for the sake of depravity, which we'll see later down the road, believe me, Death of the Family has a point to make about Batman and his family, and uses the Joker's unbelievable evil to make that point beautifully. Number 6. Merry Christmas Commissioner Starting to think we'll run out of horror stories? Not even close. We'd now like to direct the jury to Exhibit B, Detective Comics number 741, where we'll see another example of the Joker at his worst. During the No Man's Land event, Gotham City was on the precipice of collapse. This was ideal for Joker, who took advantage of the lack of police presence to set up one of his most harrowing plots yet. This issue opens with a beaten and bloodied Huntress, brutally battered after defending a public Christmas feast from the Joker and Harley Quinn alone. Her efforts were not in vain, however, as she stalled it too long enough for Batman and Nightwing to arrive on the scene. As Joker and Harley make their escape, Huntress warns Nightwing that Joker was explicitly after the infants at the feast before she passes out. Despite Huntress preventing Joker from accessing the Christmas feast, Batman soon realizes that Joker has been behind kidnappings of babies across the city. Batman informs Commissioner Gordon, his daughter Barbara, and his wife Sarah of the situation, and all three leap into action to locate the missing kids. While meeting with the rest of his team to plan the search, Joker arrives on the scene. He taunts Batman and the rest saying, as Christmas Day neared and the sun did rise, either bats found the kids or the kids, well, they dies. As Batman runs down the Joker, the Bat family spreads far and wide across the city to save the missing babies. However, most of the locations where the teams checked were booby-trapped. When Batman finally manages to chase down the fleeing clown, Harley Quinn is revealed as having disguised herself as the Joker, leading bats on a wild goose chase to waste precious time. Harley admits that while the Bat Fam and the police search far and wide, Joker has holed up with the kidnapped infants right under their noses in the police station. Commissioner Gordon freezes in terror at the news. Sarah Essen, the commissioner's wife, stands alone at the station where the Joker is hiding. She sees Joker coddling a crying baby as she quietly makes her way down the stairs. When she lifts her gun and yells freeze, Joker threatens to drop or even shoot the baby. During the standoff, Joker throws a child at Sarah, forcing her to drop her handgun and catch the falling infant. Even as Sarah reaches out to catch the child, the Joker's gun points towards her head. In one deafening bang, Joker leaves a dead Sarah Essen in a pile on the ground, surrounded by infants. Truly one of the most despicable moments in Joker's history, and yet not even the worst thing he has done to Jim Gordon. Number 5. Joker vs. Superman One of the Joker's most infamous modern misdeeds comes to us from an alternate universe. And make no mistake, it involves an act so heinous and unforgivable that it derailed the course of world history forever. I am of course talking about the fifth inclusion in our countdown, the Saga of Injustice. This is a unique entry to our list not only because it happens in an alternate dimension, but because of the object of Joker's aggression. Batman is not Joker's enemy of choice this time around, but Superman. And not just any Superman, this is a Superman who has just learned that his beloved, Lois Lane, is pregnant. 
That very night, Lois and Jimmy Olsen travel to the Metropolis docks to meet a corrupt city councilman, however there is no city council member to meet. Patiently waiting for them is the Joker himself. The Joker kills Jimmy Olsen outright and kidnaps Lois for unknown purposes. Terrified that his supervision can't locate the woman he loves, Superman goes to Batman for help. Considering Batman's long history with the Joker, he figures only Bruce could track down the madman responsible. Batman calls in the rest of the Justice League to help them track down Lois, but instead, the Flash discovers the dead corpse of the Scarecrow in Metropolis. Meanwhile, Wonder Woman finds a lead at the local shipyard, with one dock worker informing her and Superman that the Joker has hijacked a nuclear submarine. Superman quickly tracks down the sub and lifts it to shore. The Man of Steel rips his way inside and finds the sub filled with some sort of toxin. Before Superman is taken to his knees by the gas, he sees the Joker and Harley Quinn disguised in gas masks performing some sort of surgery on Lois. As Superman stands, he sees Doomsday, his most terrifying and powerful foe standing above him. Superman leaps into action carrying Doomsday far into the sky. On the ground, the Justice League capture a fleeing Joker and Harley Quinn, and Batman confirms the submarine is leaking copious amounts of fear toxin. Joker admits to surgically attaching a trigger to Lois's heart, designed specifically to detonate the warhead should her heart stop beating. It's at this moment Batman sees the bigger picture, but before anyone can act, Scarecrow's kryptonite laced fear gas wears off. Superman floats into orbit, desperately trying to keep Doomsday away from his family, until Doomsday's hulking visage shimmers away, and he realizes that it is Lois's pregnant body he has launched into space. When her and the unborn child's heartbeat cease, the nuclear warhead Joker left behind in Metropolis explodes, destroying Superman's family and his city in one horrifying moment. This is a plot Joker concocted simply to throw his villainous weight around after years of losing again and again to Batman. This time, he just felt like securing a relatively easy win. Which is terrifying considering this is the Man of Steel we're talking about. All of Joker's crimes are so crushingly unjustifiable and horrible that we pretty much expect this level of depravity from the character at this point. But Joker's actions here are so atrocious, so abominable, that they more than deserve the spot at number 5. And personally, it makes me worried about what might be coming next. Number 4. Citywide Infection Batman Endgame, closely following the events of Death of the Family, represents Joker's farewell tour. His final hurrah. Joker's last is attempt to destroy Gotham and the Bat once and for all. To accomplish this, he turns to the classics. After ambushing Commissioner Gordon in his apartment and posing as an Arkham Asylum orderly in order to successfully sedate Batman, Joker releases a variant of his famous toxin in Gotham City. Except this time, he slightly changed the formula. When Batman finally comes out of his anesthetized state, the entire city has been overrun with a fast-moving airborne Joker toxin. The poison spreads across the city like wildfire as it forces its victims to laugh, spreading the aerosolized virus to new hosts. Soon enough, all of Gotham, save a precious few, are infected by Joker's horrific poison. The city becomes a madhouse, with each and every individual driven to violence and madness by the Joker toxin. But the worst part? This Joker toxin, unlike others, has no cure. When Batman awakes to his city in shambles, he turns to Alfred and Julia Pennyworth, asking, I've created nearly a hundred cures for Joker toxins over the years. Antitoxins, antibodies, steroids. How many have you tested so far? They respond, we've tested all of them. This event has to make our list of Joker's most horrifying moments of all time because of the finality with which he executes his plan. Joker is usually interested in playing a game with the big bad bat. He's looking to be entertained, to outwit and be outwitted. The thing Joker cares about more than anything is his continued tete-a-tete -tete with Batman. No matter how many innocents he needs to kill to keep garnering Batman's attention, the Joker has never seemed all that interested in permanently and finally putting a stop to his continued relationship with Batman. Endgame presents a whole new context for the Joker. This is a Joker who says openly, See Bats, this time no more games, no more jokes. I'm just here to close up shop. The finality the Joker brings to his Endgame, the uninterest in his game going on any further, is what gives him the leeway to enact such a terrible and incurable disease on Gotham. When Joker no longer cares what comes next, there is nothing to stop him from unleashing death on a colossal, even global scale. Number 3. A Day at the Fair Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns aligns Joker against Batman one final time in the very last days of the myth itself. Though Joker is old now and no longer the sprightly young supervillain he once was, he is nonetheless able to commit atrocities that rival and even outdo his younger self. 
The Dark Knight once more acquaints us with a Joker who has nothing to lose, and again, the hell that is unleashed is unimaginable. Many of you are likely familiar with the most famous Joker scene in this story due to its inclusion in the big screen Joker film. This is, of course, when the Joker appears for a television interview in front of a live studio audience. In The Dark Knight Returns, the Joker appears with his psychologist to be interviewed live on the air. During the panel, Joker releases his toxin onto the crowd and kills the entire studio in one massive homicide. This alone shows the Joker at his most insidious, but even this act pales in comparison to what Joker would later do during this story that really earns its number 3 slot. After cruelly beating and subduing Selina Kyle, the Joker leaves a clue in her apartment for Batman to find, a single stick of cotton candy. This leads Batman and Robin, then Carrie Kelly, to the Gotham County Fair, where Joker is, and brace yourself, offering free poison cotton candy to children at the fair. When Batman flies over the bodies of the children that litter the pavement around the demonic cotton candy stand, he swears silently, it ends tonight, Joker. 16 Cub Scouts dead, and dozens more horrifically wounded by explosions. The climactic conclusion to this decade's old rivalry is one we highly suggest you read for yourself, as there could truly be no better end for the relationship of these two comic book icons. Number 2. Jason Todd Spider-Man has Gwen Stacy, the X-Men have Jean Grey, and Batman has Jason Todd. Clocking in at the number 2 spot today is Joker's actions during A Death in the Family, which features a moment that will live on in Batman's history forevermore as one of his darkest moments. While searching for Robin's, then Jason Todd's mother, Bruce Wayne and Jason find themselves in an Ethiopian refugee camp to interview Dr. Sheila Haywood. Haywood, Bruce and Jason believe, is their last candidate who could be Jason's birth mother. At first sight, Sheila recognizes young Jason, and the two embrace as long-lost mother and son. Shortly thereafter though, when Jason reveals to his mother that he is actually the Boy Wonder, his own mother sells him out to the Clown Prince of Crime. When Joker appears from behind a crate, Jason turns to see his mother pulling a gun on him, trapping him completely. It turns out Sheila had been working with Joker all along, embezzling money for the medical funds herself. In front of Sheila's eyes, Joker begins ruthlessly beating Jason with the butt of his pistol. After Robin gets a drop on Joker, the clown angrily picks up a nearby crowbar and begins truly pummeling Robin within an inch of his life. Sheila stares until she can no longer bear to watch. Afterwards, Joker double crosses Sheila, tying her to a post, and leaves a bomb next to the unconscious Robin. When Robin struggles awake, instead of defusing the bomb, he unties his mother and asks her to run. She refuses, helping Jason to the door of the warehouse just in time to find the door locked. As Batman arrives on the scene, the entire building explodes in a fiery ball of carnage. Both Sheila and the young Robin perish at the scene. Finding Robin's limp and lifeless body amongst the rubble marks one of the most powerful moments in Bruce Wayne's entire life, including the death of his parents, and additionally marks one of the Joker's cruelest deeds of all time, successfully killing Batman's surrogate son, the Boy Wonder. Number 1. The Killing Joke well, we've made it, gang. The top of the list, the worst of the worst, the basest, most wicked, vile, depraved thing the Joker has ever done. With a character like this one, eventually it gets hard to determine which diabolical deed should go where. How do you decide which action is worse than two mass homicides? But in any list of the Joker's worst deeds, the killing joke undebatedly has to take the top spot. The killing joke is the story of Joker trying to drive someone insane. The Joker decides to show the world, and Batman, that anyone can lose their marbles if put through enough hell. In a sick twisted way, perhaps Joker is also trying to convince himself that he is not alone, that anyone could become just like him, given the wrong circumstance. And so Joker sets out to create those circumstances, to put someone through enough suffering that they lose their minds. But for his unwilling victim, he chooses not just anyone, but our old friend, Police Commissioner Jim Gordon. Joker starts by invading Gordon's home. He shows up out of the blue, dressed in the now infamous Hawaiian shirt and wide brim purple hat. Jim is enjoying an otherwise idyllic afternoon with his daughter Barbara, who of course is also secretly Batgirl. When Joker arrives, Barbara answers the door, and immediately, Joker fires a bullet through her spine, permanently crippling her. When Jim lunges at the maniac, Joker's goons hold him back and beat him into unconsciousness. Meanwhile, Joker begins preparing to take photos of Barbara as she bleeds out on the floor. When Barbara weakly manages to ask, Why are you doing this? The Joker responds, To prove a point, here's to crime. When Barbara wakes up at the hospital to Batman at her bedside, her terrified expression says it all. She tells Bruce, he, He's taking it to the limit this time. 
and she couldn't be more correct. At that very moment, Commissioner Gordon awakes in a horrifying circus. Joker's terrifying goons strip Jim down and begin tasing him mercilessly, leading him to Joker's throne atop a mountain of plastic baby dolls. Joker forces Jim through a twisted carnival ride that compels him to stare at images of his own daughter, Barbara, undressed and defiled, writhing in pain on the floor as she suffers from the gunshot wound in her stomach and the broken glass on the ground. When Gordon exits the ride, he is quiet and despondent. Joker soon grows bored of him and has him thrown back in his cage. Thankfully, before Joker is able to torture Jim any further, Batman arrives and puts an end to his gruesome charade. But even still, the killing joke remains the most evil, heinous plot the Joker ever devised. Proof eternal that the Joker is the cruelest, most heinous, and ghastly villain in Batman's real gallery and perhaps ever devised. But that's our list, what do you think? If you have any other Joker moments you think should make the list, let us know in the comments down below. I've been Slice of Otaku with Plot Armor Comics. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.